It is time for us to expand our consciousness regarding Bitcoin and its relationship to money as we know it. The key to the health and growth of any society is the ability of certain members of that society to expand their individual consciousness and share the new insights with the greater community. By expanding consciousness, I do not mean some New Age spiritual practice. The phrase simply refers to refining your understanding of the world around you. In fact, the most valuable expansions of consciousness often move understanding from the realm of the spiritual and into the realm of the materialistic or scientific. There was a time when the common understanding of illness was that evil spirits entered the sufferer's body and caused them to become ill. Ritual practices to expel evil spirits were the norm for millennia across many cultures. In a process of cultural evolution, we have now arrived at an understanding that viruses, bacteria, and other organisms are responsible for many illnesses. Once that understanding was widespread, once the cultural consciousness regarding illness had been expanded, then another group of individuals could further expand their consciousness and find the cures that would become known as antibiotics and antivirals. Although we may look back on our ancestors who believed in evil spirits and see them as primitive, we should appreciate their profound intuition. A bacterial infection is indeed an infestation of invisible beings. Those beings simply could not be seen until the invention of the microscope. Calling them evil spirits isn't wrong. It is simply unrefined. Refinement of understanding is the result of expanded consciousness. It is not self-evident that Bitcoin is money. If, in fact, Bitcoin is money, it is money unlike anything that has ever been called money. A high-quality digital photograph of a Picasso painting is not a Picasso painting. Even if I create a full-size, ultra-realistic print of the photograph and put it in a frame, giving it a material aspect, that print is still not a Picasso painting. Even if, at a distance of a few feet, the print is indistinguishable from the original to the naked eye, the print is still not a Picasso painting. A legitimate Picasso painting can sell at auction for millions of dollars. Even the highest quality print most certainly will not. It doesn't matter how badly we want the print to be valued in the same way as the painting. It doesn't matter whether we think the print should be valued in the same way as the painting. A print of a Picasso painting is not a Picasso painting. Exploring the metaphysics of value has been a crucial pursuit of philosophers for millennia. Almost universally accepted as a first principle when discussing the concept of value is the idea that a human's value system is a hierarchy or web of preferences. In any given context, an individual prefers one behavior over another. In the biological sphere, you prefer breathing freely to suffocating. In the moral sphere, that might be a preference for nonviolent conflict resolution over bloody combat. In the economic sphere, this preference expresses itself as a demand for a particular good or service. In all cases, your preference for a given behavior or item, your value hierarchy, is subjective and relativistic. No two people have the exact same value hierarchy and the degree to which you prefer a given behavior is relative to some other behavior. There is no value in a vacuum. The relativistic nature of our value system is crucial in the context of money. Because nothing can be valued except in relation to some other thing, in order to value some completely novel behavior or object, we need some other behavior or object, one which is already in our value hierarchy, to use for comparison. This initial foundational concept is often referred to as a frame of reference. For concepts that are sufficiently new, where no similar object or behavior has previously existed, the frame of reference is often woefully inaccurate in hindsight. The word photograph literally means light drawing. Before the photograph, there was no method to reproduce an image except for a talented artist to use his hands and a medium such as paint to reproduce on canvas what his eyes or his imagination had seen. A photograph is created through one of many processes that capture light, but it would take severe mental gymnastics to argue that a photograph is somehow a drawing. 
In the 1800s, the machines that would evolve into the modern automobile were first demonstrated on the roads of Europe. These machines were at first called horseless carriages. At the time, everyone was intimately familiar with horse-drawn carriages. The earliest models were even styled like horse-drawn carriages or coaches. That you still use the word car or coche in Spanish, and that the strength of an engine is measured in horsepower, is a remnant of the necessity for a frame of reference. Ferrari uses a horse as its logo, but to call a 488 Spider a horseless carriage seems quite ridiculous. Calling an Instagram selfie a light drawing or a Shelby Cobra a horseless carriage is about as accurate and useful as calling the influenza virus an evil spirit. Calling Bitcoin money is just as inaccurate. The value that you ascribe to the money in your pocket or in your bank account is derived from a lineage that traces back thousands of years. We can hear the echoes of this lineage in the very names of currencies. Peso, Lira, Shekel, Mark, Bot, Drachma, and of course, Pound, are all references to units of weight. Many other currency names such as Gilder, Rand, Rupee, Ruble, and Zloty are references to the metal from which early forms of money were made. Names like Escudo, Ringgit, and Yuan are references to the shape of or markings on early metal coins. Clearly, when a Londoner uses his Visa card to pay for his morning coffee in pound sterling, there is no coin made of sterling silver with a weight of one pound involved in the transaction. The name remains because of the need for a frame of reference in order to establish value. The evolutionary process, both biological and cultural, is conservative. As money evolved from weights of precious metals, through coins and metal-backed paper notes, through fiat digital currencies backed by nothing but faith, we can see the logical progression with a frame of reference remaining at each step. The order instrument that you execute when using your credit card to make a purchase was able to be introduced because another order instrument, checks, were widely understood and accepted. Checks were able to be introduced because it was widely understood that the checks represented physical money on deposit with the banks on which the checks were drafted. The physical fiat currency on deposit with banks was able to be introduced because the gold back notes, which are current fiat notes replaced, were already widely accepted. Gold back notes could be introduced because gold coins of specific weights and shapes were already widely accepted. Standardized coins were able to be introduced because the value of the metal being coined at specific weights was already widely understood and accepted. Each new iteration of money has bootstrapped its value from the previous version, which serves as a frame of reference. Bitcoin has a bootstrap problem. Bitcoin is not in the lineage of money. It is an entirely alien, completely abstract digital species spontaneously generated from an entirely new set of rules. This is the root of Bitcoin's volatility in terms of its exchange rate with existing money. That volatility is evidence that using money as we know it as a frame of reference for Bitcoin is counterproductive. Fiat national currencies fluctuate against one another based on the relative success or failure of monetary policy of a given country. Bitcoin has a predictable issuance schedule, and is not subject to manipulation by any government. And yet, markets cannot settle on a value. This is primarily due to the inadequacy of money as a frame of reference for Bitcoin. In the early days of Bitcoin, using money as a frame of reference in the style of the horseless carriage was necessary. We are moving into a time when the second generation of Bitcoiners, children of the earliest adopters, are going to begin making their own mark in the space. We have an opportunity to embrace Bitcoin for what it actually is, to expand our consciousness and fully reap the benefits, not of an evolution of money, but of a revolution in our understanding of value itself. <laughs>